Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. This is our Saturday service with God's Church of Love online. We're reading Luke chapter 4, verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind. And this is what the Lord had popped in my head this morning to set at liberty them that are bruised. Now we're going to deal with the bruised. And I want you to understand that when Jesus came, that was his, uh, 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 he was announcing his ministry. And when he announced his ministry, this describes the flavor of his ministry. And his ministry is to minister to people and their innermost needs. So I want you to hear just how his whole even reason for coming and dying is to deal with the inner man in a lot of our cases. That's why he deals with setting at liberty them that are bruised. Now, many of us came to the Lord broke, busted, disgusted, bruised, battered, hurt, abused, uh, tossed to the side, ostracized, kicked to the curb, feeling like nobodies, insecures, I mean, with a lot of insecurities, just a whole lot of things going on that make it difficult to navigate through life. Well, I want to share this with you. <clears throat> God understands or else he wouldn't have had to go through all that he went through. That's why the Bible says he is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. That's not just him saying, oh, Jesus is really touched and full of compassion because you have a headache or because you caught a cold. No, he's dealing with the innermost struggles of mankind. And many of us have a, a, a multitude, a myriad of, of struggles that people don't even know. They can't see behind the smile. But God sees behind the mask. He sees everything. He sees what you don't even see. He sees your need. When other people will see your faults, and your faults are a symptom of your needs, Jesus sees your need. Now, a lot of times we don't realize how understanding God really is. God is very understanding, and he died on the cross not only to forgive us for sin, but to heal us from those deep-seated, hidden, secret needs and wounds and bruises that nobody sees behind the smile. There's a song, it, it goes like, it starts out with, smile, make them think you're happy. Lie, say that things are fine, and hide that empty longing that you feel. Don't ever show it. Just keep your heart concealed. Well, why? Why are the days so lonely? I wonder where, where can a heart go free? And who will dry those tears that no one sees? There must be someone to share your silent dreams. Caught like a leaf in the wind, looking for a friend, where do you turn? Whisper the words of a prayer. you find him there, arms open wide, love in his eyes. Jesus, <laughs> he meets you where you are. Jesus, he heals your wounded scars and all the love you're longing for is Jesus, the friend of a wounded heart. And many of us are living a walking wounded life, a walking wounded existence. You ever see women years ago, maybe some of you can look back at your grandmother's young pictures and they're sitting there with their high heel shoes off and they've got bunions and their bunions have got bunions and their bunions that got bunions also have corns on top of the bunions. And, woo, 
They look like a deformed mess from being in those heels all day. And trust me, those, as they call it, them dogs are barking. They're hurting. Well, if somebody were to step on one of those toes or bump into one of those shoes while, it, while the shoe is on and it bumped into one of those corns, trust me when I say, somebody's going to hoop, holler, cry, or shove somebody off of their feet so hard they might knock them down on the floor. Why? Because when you're hurting, you lose a sense of self-control and you're so reactionary and your responses are almost to the extreme and people are looking at you like, well, my goodness, what's their problem? i tell you what the problem is. Woundedness, a bruised, broken spirit. And every single one of us has wounds. We're not totally, completely healed on this side. But some of us have gotten a lot of healing and some of us have gotten little to none. And the only difference is that the ones that have a lot of healing are the ones that ask all the time. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. So you have to get in the habit of asking God to heal your open running emotional and psychological scars and wounds so that you can become that whole person that Jesus died for you to become. He empowered us to become whole. He doesn't want you walking around hurting and flinching. Years ago, my father told me when uh, my mother had a nervous breakdown, okay? And when she had the nervous breakdown, they took all the kids. I was my father's only child, but he was also helping her raise her other, ch- you know, her her older kids from her former marriage. Well, when she went in the, in the uh, asylum, they took all the kids and tossed us in orphanages. Well, because my father had had, had uh, gone to court and given me his last name so he could have legal guardianship and legal say as to what happens in my life, he was able to go and get me out of the orphanage. What he told me, listen to this. He told me that when, when I brought you out, you were doing something you didn't do before you went in. And I always wondered if you were abused in the orphanage because he said if there was a sudden noise you know like something banging or sharp something that falls on the ground he said you would react to the noise by throwing your arms up and blocking your face in fear now to this day i don't like sharp noises but i would not know where that came from if he had not said anything if he had not described that incident So a lot of times we don't know why we respond to things the way we do. And our response is an indication of a symptom of something being wrong, something having gone awry, something that's been damaged years or decades ago that we can't even remember. Either it's blocked out or it just does not come to the surface for some for whatever reason. But the damage and the effect is still right there. And every time you react to certain stimulus, whether it's positive or negative stimulus, your reaction is an indication of what happened back then, that there are unresolved issues. And when you have unresolved issues, this is what you get. Let me give you a few examples. One example would be, uh, are you trying to make fun of my weight? You know, you don't have to sit there and talk to me. You don't have to look at me. If you don't like looking at me, just get up and move. I don't know what you keep looking at me like that for. I know you said something about my weight. I could tell the way your voice went down. I know you were saying something about me. I know. I'll be trying to play it off. I know you're trying to say something about me. Now, the person might have been talking about 
how fat the music was. They might have been talking about how fat the burger was. They might not have been thinking about you. And when you came in and sat down in the room, they might have been admiring the color or the outfit you had on. But because you're sensitive about your weight, that's where I've been most of my life. That's why I know. You assume that you are the central focus of everyone's conversation because you look like one big blob of a monster. And that's the way you see yourself. So you assume that everyone else sees you that way as well. And there goes the reaction to the bunions and the corns. And you start saying nasty things to people that weren't thinking anything nasty about you. And the Bible says the wicked flee. They flee when no man is pursuing them. Nobody's chasing after them, but they're running. Well, that's the way paranoid emotions go. And paranoid emotions are from past hurts that have not been resolved. Mm. You're bound up, you're tied up in knots, you're, you're strung tight, you're high strung, everything. You're watching people to see where's the next attack coming from. What are they going to say? What do they think about me? I know he's looking down at me. I know I could tell by his facial expression. No, they're not looking down on you. You are looking down on yourself. That's why you need to be healed. Because when you're healed, you don't care what they think. It doesn't phase you because you know who you are. You know who you are in the Lord. You have a confidence. It's, it's a freedom. I mean, when, when the Bible says, he whom the sun sets free is free indeed. It is a freedom to be enjoyed. I'm telling you, it's a big difference between being tied up, bound up, wrinkled up, and, and wound up from all of your emotional scars then when God begins to heal those scars and they go away, no longer having power over you, and you start enjoying a new level of freedom. Oh, this is nice. I like being me. I know they're not, you know, they might not be crazy about me, but that's all right. I like them anyway. I understand. Everybody's not going to be everybody's favorite. And it's not a big deal. It doesn't matter. Because you know God loves you and you love yourself. That's a healthy place to be. Now, I have seen other times. You can sit there. I had a conversation years ago. Let me share this with you. Years ago. Here are some stories to really paint the picture of what I'm talking about. Years ago, this is in the days when I wasn't even saved. But I still recognized what I was hearing. I was with my boyfriend, some guy I was dating at the time. And he came with me to my sister's New Year's Eve party. And everybody's sitting around talking. Well, guess what? My family happens to be very intelligent. And my sister and my niece and my other niece and my mother, they were, and my father, were the geniuses of the family. And I admired it. But check it out. My friend, who was full of insecurities, started drinking, drinking a little beer here, a little beer there. And next thing I know, he's sitting there looking all full of attitude. And I pulled him aside and asked him, what's wrong? How come you're not participating in the conversation? You look like they're talking about you like a dog. Well, I know they're looking at me funny. They think I'm stupid. That's all that is. They think I'm stupid. And I'm looking at him like, they're not even thinking about you. I didn't say it because he would have taken that as an insult. But I told him my family does not trip with people that way. They like people. They're not sitting there taking your IQ. They're not snobs like that. He wouldn't believe it. As far as he was concerned, they were talking over his head. Well, what that only meant was they were using words he didn't understand. He didn't know the definition. It made him feel like a big dummy.
But that wasn't their fault. That was his personal problem because nobody even mentioned him after the party. Nobody said, why is he such a big dummy? Nobody asked about him with suspicious tones in their voice. Nobody was thinking about that. It was his insecurities that made him feel that they felt that way about him. No, that wasn't from them. That was from his deep-seated bruising and insecurities, unhealed wounds, inadequacy, feeling of feelings of inadequacy. You don't understand things, so instead of just saying, what does that word mean? Or pulling me aside, what does that mean? Or whatever. He's intimidated by their intelligence. And it made him uncomfortable. He's ready to go. Got drunk behind it. Got drunk. I'm telling you when... Well, here's another example. Now, this is me. Let's talk about me. I always had weight issues from the time I was in junior high school all the way up. I was like a size 16, a regular 16. By the time I came to California... I was a full woman's 18 and uh, from there. So I was always insecure about my weight because as a child, I was made fun of in elementary school and those wounds were not healed. They were just as raw when I was in my 20s as they were when I was five and six years old. Trust me. So some of those things can only be healed by God. You can't psych yourself out of them. You can't just get over it. You have to ask God to get it out of you. So it has no more control over your response mechanism. Now, here I am walking around insecure about being heavy. That's my personal insecurity. I didn't think I was that cute. I thought I looked like the Goodyear Blitz. And anytime somebody said anything in the room about a diet, I knew it was a dig for me. They wanted me to lose weight because they didn't like looking at me and my big fat self. Oh, I really had issues there. And it would ruin my day. My feathers would be drooped all day long. Now you could tease me about my weight, call me big old fat, good year blip, whatever. I laugh right along with you, say, I ain't showing your hair for me, girl. Because I'm not insecure about it anymore. Why? Why am I not insecure? Because I kept asking God to heal those wounds. And he did. So I don't have to walk around flinching like I've got corns on my shoulders and bunions on my chest and and scars on my face. and I'm not walking around like a a wounded scar from head to toe. I'm not paranoid and suspicious of what they think and what they meant when they said that. And I heard this, but they said the other. And no, but I heard that, so I know you meant that. No, no. Trust me when I say this. Many of you hear what your insecurities have been telling you, not what people are really saying. Many of you feel what's coming from people as a put down and a criticism and a slap and a a, a public a, a, oh just a public uh humiliation coming at you folks just making fun of you laughing at you smirking at you and have half the people that's not even on their mind they got bigger things to think about than making you feel comfortable about your looks i mean making you feel uncomfortable about your looks. See, when you are self-conscious, when you are insecure and uncomfortable with yourself, you become uncomfortable with other people. You see them as being more than, bigger than, more intelligent than, more everything than you. And you're the little pea that's stuck in the midst of all these giants. Many of us think of ourselves as the Bible talks about the nation of Israel when they came out, when when God told them to spy out the land and they sent all these guys to check it out 
and only two came back, Caleb and what's his face. They came back and said, oh, we are well able by God's word. We're well able to take the land. What did the other 10 say? The other 10 spies said, oh, well, we can't, we can't, there's no way because we saw them as giants and we were just grasshoppers in our own eyes. And that's what defeats many of you. Not other people, but S-E-L-F, self. Many of us defeat ourselves before we get off the ground because we don't believe we can do it. We don't believe we can accomplish it. So if we don't believe it, well, of course they don't believe that I can do anything. They're looking down on me. No, they're not looking down on you. You're looking down on yourself. That's why you must, you owe it to yourself to ask God to heal those unresolved issues, those unhealed wounds, those open, runny, emotional, psychological sores, those bruises that are in your spirit. You've got to ask constantly for healing. You got to pursue God for it because your wounds will sabotage your success if you're not careful. I've seen it. A friend of, of mine and I, we were sitting at a bar. Yeah, I wasn't saved all my life. So yeah, we were sitting at a bar. And she was sitting up there just chugger lugging away. And that alcohol was getting, I mean, I'm telling you, the alcohol brings out the worst if you're insecure. And the guy's looking in our direction. He wasn't thinking about him. You can tell him his eyes are just going wherever. And she looks at him. And she says this, and I see one thing, I ain't going to back up no fool. You don't act a fool. You out there on your own. I ain't going to get my butt raked through the cold because you acting stupid. So she sits there at the bar and she looks at him, said, what the F you looking at? And I'm looking at her like, oh, no. Now, I'm the only black in the whole bar. So, you know, I ain't going to start no mess. I'm trying to, I'm trying to be cool. And she's telling this guy, what the F you looking at? And I'm getting my pocketbook and I'm slipping out. So I'm, I'm going to go to the restroom. <laughs> I'm like, I'm out of, my name is Wes. I'm out of that mess. You ain't going to tie me up in your foolish crap. That man wasn't thinking about her. So she getting ready to start a fight, a barroom brawl over nothing. She's got her insecurities. The man ain't thinking about her. The man doesn't know her. And I tipped my little self out of there. I said, oh, you on your own, but baby cakes. Uh-uh. Mama Sita ain't had a fight since she was in junior high, and fights are too young for me. That, that's for babies. I don't get in that crap. So you want to get in that, you in it all by yourself. No backup here, buddy, because I ain't going to back up no fool. That's how people get arrested, <laughs> by hanging out with fools and getting caught up in their fool's mess. Hmm. Yeah. So anyway, check it out. I have seen people stand outside arguing. Well, what you trying to say? Well, why don't you just make it plain? Blah, blah, blah. Well, look, if you really want to know, blah, and they're just escalating together, climbing up together, just fuming that, uh, fueling that fire. I mean, the, the smoke fumes are flying everywhere. The sparks are flying everywhere. Everything but the blows. That's the only thing that hasn't gotten going yet are the blows. You know how many people get killed on a humbug to find out that both of them were talking apples and oranges. And the only reason they went to blows is because of emotional scars. People die behind that stupid crap. Don't let your emotional scars bury your behind in an early grave. Don't do that. Some arguments aren't even worth having. Some of y'all are so insecure about what other people think about you. Somebody fronts you off. Oh, no, I don't let them talk to me like that. Mm -mm, no, I'm going to get them straight. And 
So you got them straight. And so what did you prove? That you're just as silly as they are. There's no, there's no honor in being a fool. And a lot of us allow our emotional scars to cause us to act a fool, talk a fool, be a fool. Don't do that. If you're in the presence of a fool, if you're in the presence of a person that fishing for an argument, fishing for a fight, walk away. Just get out of Dodge. If you can't agree with them, get the heck out of there. It ain't worth it. Now, my question to you, are you going to spend the rest of your life jumping to every emotional scar? Your emotional scar says jump, and you say ha ha. Your emotional scar says act the fool, kick their butt, cuss them out. And you say, okay, okay. No. That's why the Bible says, acknowledge him in all your ways and he will direct your path. Don't let your scars direct your path. They'll take you straight to hell. And I ain't talking about the real hell. I'm talking about hell right here on earth. Some people are incarcerated to this day because their emotional scars took them straight to hell. In a handbasket over a humbug, wasn't about nothing. And they got all caught up in the moment over, a, over an emotional scar. Somebody took, I remember, I remember one time I was in elementary school. Talk about emotional scars. You know, people could get killed behind this mess. Now this is me now, I'm talking about me. Here I am in the third grade. This guy named Randy, he was a little slow. Well, he was a good kid. There was nothing wrong with him. He and I didn't have any issues with each other. He's going around. The teacher tells him, which I have no clue of, teacher tells him to walk around and count the heads in the classroom. So he takes a ruler. Now, he has no idea what just happened with me. There was a guy in my class named Willie that was always on me like white on rice, constantly making fun of me, putting me down, hurting my feelings, humiliating me in public. And I was sick of it, sick of it. And when my anger rose, my fear would die down and I would be bold enough to get in a fight with, you know, when I was always the scaredy cat. So Randy made the mistake. I didn't see him coming. And he, behind me, walked up, and here I'm sitting, and he taps my shoulder. A little too hard. It was, it shocked me, because I didn't know anybody was that close to me, so it startled me. And it startled me, and the anger that was for Billy rose up, and I exploded. Oh, my goodness. I almost got my booty whooped that day. I never lost a fight, but I would have lost that one. The teacher broke it up just in time. I wailed on Randy like he was a rag doll. Randy didn't know where it was coming from, what happened, what did he do wrong. And after we got to fighting, he started defending himself. And that's when I started getting scared, like, uh oh, I bit off more than I could chew. And the teacher came and broke it up just in time for me not to get hurt. But I had to hurry up and apologize to him. And explain to him, I wasn't saved, but I had sense. I wasn't trying to hurt nobody. And I explained to him, I wasn't even angry at you. I was angry at Billy. He's always picking on me. But you scared me when you hit my shoulder. And when you tapped me, it kind of stung and it startled me. And the anger just came out. I couldn't control it. It just spewed out. And I exploded before I even had a chance to know who you were that I was pounding on. He accepted my apology. We were good after that. But do you see how things like that, what if I had had a knife? What if I had had a long pair of scissors and I went into a blind rage and blacked out because some dingbat over there would hurt my feelings. And here an innocent person could have gotten killed or badly injured because of my emotions. What are you doing to people because of your emotions? What's 
happening in your life? What are you cheating yourself out of? Because you can't get along with folks because of your emotions, because of those unhealed wounds. Are you going to God? Are you pursuing him for healing? Or are you pampering and indulging those negative emotions of yours? Those emotional scars, those psychological uh, tears in your brain. Those volatile volcanoes that erupt whenever they get good and ready. On whoever they get good and ready to erupt on. And here you are just following suit because you've lost all control. I shouldn't have put a hand on Randy. I just lost control over something somebody else did to me. Some of you men cannot keep your hands to yourself. You're steadily beating up on your wives. Because of something somebody else did to you, some insecurity, some anger issue you have from something that happened when you were a kid. You never dealt with it. You never took it to God. You were man, so you're going to handle it. You ain't handling it. You're punishing an innocent person for something somebody else did. And one day you will kill them if you don't stop. Or if they don't have enough sense to leave you behind. Think about it, you guys. Emotional wounds can be deadly. They can cause you to kill your own child if you're not careful. It's, I just feel like it's a word of warning. God wants to heal you. His tenderness is reaching out to you. His, his compassion is reaching out to you. Don't reject his love so that you can act out of your hurt because you feel like you have a right to be hurt. Yeah, you got a right to be hurt, but do you really want to live that way for the rest of your life? It's called torment. Or would you like to be free and full of the peace of God that passes all understanding? Would you like to be healed? How would you like to live? How would you like your emotional condition to be? How would you like your psychological condition to be? How would you like it to be? Go to God now and ask him to heal you. And you keep asking and keep asking. Because some things God doesn't do overnight and some things he'll do in a split second. But once it's done, that one thing that he healed you from will never come back. Never come back to haunt you again because what God does is thorough, thorough. So I beg you to please, I beseech you to please go to God and let him do his thing because when he gets in there and he does his thing, People stop hurting you and you stop hurting people. And yeah, our feelings will get hurt along the way. But here's a good trick. It's a good trick to get rid of it. You ever write something on a piece of paper with a pencil and it's wrong and you take the eraser, you flip it over and you erase it and it's gone. And you can write it and make it right, right? Well, this is what you do. It's how you erase those negative emotions that come at you on a daily basis. Hmm. Lord, Mm, did you just hear what so-and-so said? Please, that hurt. Admit how it makes you feel. That hurt. That made me angry. That made me feel humiliated. That made me feel small. Lord, take the hurt out right now in the name of Jesus, please. You get in the habit of asking that question every day of your life with every negative effect of someone else on your emotions and you will find that you're not piling up a, a scar on top of scar but the pile is getting smaller and smaller and smaller and you're able to walk away from a snide remark with a smile on your face because you felt God taking that anger out you felt that hurt just going up into smoke and dissipating you felt it go away. You felt God touch it and remove it. 
See, God can give you instant healing. If you ask instantly, as soon as you feel the hurt, he'll heal it instantly. And sometimes he'll let it linger because he wants to go deeper. And he'll let it bother you enough for you to say, okay, Lord, what's, what's wrong? Why won't that leave my mind? Why is it still bothering me, Lord? Take it out, please. What is it? And God will tell you what it is. And you tell him to take it out. And hey, he'll go down to the root. Start up rooting that thing, pulling it up, pulling the whole root up, and then all the tentacles that go with it, all the little branches from the root. Next thing you know, feel like you lost 100 pounds, baby. That doesn't have any more effect on you. You may go through dry heaves. You may cry for hours. Go with it, but let God heal you. He can. He wants to, and at your invite, he will. God bless you.